Water covers 70% of the Earth's surface, mostly in the oceans, and makes up about three ten thousandths of the Earth's mass. Scientists think the oceans were formed more than four billion years ago when the Earth was still very young. Scientists also think that water has been essential for the formation of life as we know it. But where did all that water come from? Let's ask an astronomer who can look into the past for us. So can you tell us where water on Earth came from? In some form or another, the water came from the protosolar nebula. This is the nebula from which the Earth formed over the course of about 100 million years. And we observe such nebula, or as we call them, protoplanetary disks, regularly around young stars that are about one to a few million years old. And if we look at some of these nebula in detail, we actually find that they contain large amounts of water. And did that water vapor condense into the young Earth? It's not as easy as that. Actually, if you look at these disks, you will find that the temperature in the disk drops as you go further and further away from the star. If you look at our own solar system, you see that Mercury, the innermost planet, is very hot. Then you go to the position of Earth and you get intermediate temperatures. And as you go to the outer planets, Uranus, Neptunus, they are ice giants. So we think there's a certain fixtures line where the temperature drops below the temperature that's necessary to have water freeze out as ice. And this is where we actually think where the comets form. So they form beyond this line and they consist largely also of water ice. About 50% of that is rocky material, but the other half is ice. And if these comets impacted on the young Earth, they would have delivered large amounts of water and that could evaporate and later recondense to form the oceans. Uh, but there was also water vapour in the inner solar nebula where the Earth formed, so what happened to that water? Yes, that's true. One possibility is, for example, that it gets incorporated into rocky material. And we see that happen on Earth. Clays, for example, can store large amounts of water. So we think that if these wet rocks were actually used to build the planet Earth, that at a later stage, when the mantle was outgassing, when volcanism started, that water actually got freed up, it got vaporized and recondensed then to form the oceans. So if we find this water on other disks around other young stars, then oceans must be really common on exoplanets. Yeah, this is what fascinates me actually. So with our team, we want to look at a larger sample of these disks. And what we do is we use observations, but we also use computer simulations that tell us for each region in the disk how much water vapor there is and they tell us where the snow line is. And so by comparing observations with these simulations, we can actually figure out how common are planets with oceans and what is the fraction of disks that end up being completely dry. And that's interesting because life as we know it can only form in an environment with water. And so it will be interesting to see how many disks are out there that may not have the possibility to form life.